The Log Cabin Christmas by Ellen Howard, illustrated by Ronald Himmler. The snow had been a snowin' for days and days. We couldn't go to meetin' tomorrow, if there was a church, said Sis. Who wants to set in a cold old church, said Bub. There's better things to do on Christmas Day. What? I cried. What will we do? Sis and Bub was quiet. Bub shrugged and turned away. Take this here inside, Elviry, Sis said, shoving a pail of snow at me. Set it by the fire to melt. But, I said, get, said Sis. This must be Elviry. So I hauled in the snow for water, thinking on Christmas back home. Back home in Carolina, our stockings was hung for St. Nicholas to fill. We had fruitcake for dinner and singing. When Sis came in, I whispered in her ear, we can still hang our stockings, I said. We can have a fruit cake, Sis shook her head. Elviry, I reckon St. Nicholas ain't like to come now that ma'am is gone, she said. Christmas is tomorrow. It takes weeks to age a cake. I could hardly take it in. No church, no stockings, no stick or candy or toys, no fruit cake for Christmas dinner. Ain't there going to be no Christmas, I said. Sis just hung her head. This must be Sis. Granny was nodding beside the fire. I ran to her chair and tugged on her arm. Ain't there gonna be no Christmas, Granny? I cried. Hush up, child, she said. So I hushed my mouth, but my head kept on talking. We had to have Christmas, I thought. Ma'am would have said so right out. Ma'am would have made a Christmas, but Ma'am was dead. Was Granny? I didn't say nothing when Pap and Bub came in. They stomped their feet and beat their arms to chase away the cold. Then they settled to mending the harness whilst Sis and Granny sewed. That was what we did these snowy days. It was too cold to do most outdoor work, too cold for building, too cold for washing, too cold for traveling far. There's Pap and Bub. It's heathen, Granny told, said all of a sudden, to have no preaching on Christmas Day. Come spring, we'll see about building a church, Pap said. I doubt I'll live to see it. Well, there ain't no church for miles around, cried Pap. There ain't no preaching to go to. I didn't fetch us to this godforsaken place, said Granny. Pap jumped up, knocking over his stool. Get out from underfoot, Elviry, he hollered, stumbling over me. He stomped out of the cabin. Granny sank back in her chair and rocked hard, muttering to the fire. Shove over, quarreled Bub, poking Sis in the ribs. You're a hog in the warm. Look who's talking, Sis said. Not getting along real well. I made myself small in my corner. My tears wet the quilt I was piecing. I pondered on Christmas. Ma'am had loved Christmas. She used to put ivy and holly in a jug on the table, holly on the mantel, and ivy above the door. She used to cook and bake till the house was fragrant with spice. She used to sing and hum all day long. Joy to the world. She used to set candles a burning. You'll set the house afire, Granny would fuss, but I could tell she wasn't vexed. It's to light Mary and Joseph on their way, ma'am would say. It's to help them find the stable. You're a daft one, Pap would say, but he'd smile and pat her hand. Sis and Bub would giggle, full of secrets. We needed Christmas. They're all remembered. She's remembering everybody talking about Christmas here. There wasn't no holly bush beside the cabin door here in Michigan, but there was pine trees galore. 
Pine is green like holly, I thought. It smells powerful, fine. So when the sun came out as mid at midday, I tied my shawl over my head and borrowed Sis's coat. I'm going for a walk, I said, and no one said me nay. Don't go too far, Elviry, Granny said. Don't get all wet, said Sis. Stay out of trouble, said Bub. The cold caught my breath and turned it to clouds. My cheeks got stiff and pained, but I found some pine branches and cut them with my knee, my knife. Soon my arms was laden. I turned towards home, following the chimney smoke. Don't bring that truck in here, said Granny. It's for Christmas, I said. Fool, said Bub, but Sis said to him, shut up. I stood on my stool to put pine on the door top and string it on the mantle. The puny sprigs went into ma'am's ma china jug and I set it on the table. Make it look pretty. Wishing we had holly berries, I said. I didn't heed sis, a rootin' in the quilt scrap sack. Granny eased up from her rocker and commenced to stir up something. Wonder what Granny's doing there at the table. Then Pap came in with a big tub of snow. We need washing up, he said. Being littlest, I was last to wash. By the time I was clean, a shoe fly pie was cooling on the table. For Christmas dinner, Granny said. Beautiful. The cabin was spicy and steamy. The dark had crept up to the door. I saw there was bows of red in the pine boughs from scraps that Sis had found. Bub fetched out the candles. You'll set a house on fire, a fire, Granny fussed as he set them in the window on the mantel and the table. It's to light Mary and Joseph on their way, I told her, and Sis said, it's to help them find the stable. Foolishness, Granny muttered, but she set herself to rock. Those candles. One by one, the candles was lit. We're going to have Christmas, I said with a sigh. Bless you, child, said Granny, and Pat patted my hand. Then we was peaceful. Granny and Pap and Sis and Bub and me seemed like Mam was with us, too. Creak, creak went Granny's chair. Snap, pop went the fire. We breathed in molasses and fresh pine smell and the warmth of candle smoke. All of a sudden, I heard Granny's singing voice rise, quavery and thin. Above the creak of her chair, Sis joined in, then Bub, then Pap. I looked at their faces, a glow in the light. Then I opened my mouth and sang, Joy to the world. And that's the end of the story.